Hello, welcome everybody. We're gonna give um, just a few more minutes for everyone to join. And if you'd like, there is a chat section where we'll be covering any questions over in the chat area. I'll type a message now. All right, and I am recording this, so if you need to hop off at any point, you can do so, and I'll be sure to send you the recording afterwards. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen here. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started, but certainly um, we might have a few people come on or leave throughout the presentation. And as I mentioned, just make sure that you type any questions that you have into the chat box. So thank you so much for joining me for this free webinar, Facebook for Business. This is a how-to webinar which means that we will be uh, going step by step through how to set up a Facebook business page. So it's going to be a lot of uh, settings and information about a business page. And I'm going to spend the bulk of today's webinar actually working on building a brand new Facebook business page. Some of you might be much further along than this, but hopefully you will grab some tips, especially as we get into the autoresponders and the away messages, the FAQs, and setting up your business page template. The, there are a few features that I think a lot of business owners might not know are there. So hopefully today's webinar will help you make some changes to your current business page, or if you don't have one, maybe today's webinar will help you start setting it up from scratch. All right, so we are going to get started here. Just a quick note, um, we do have some upcoming training classes that I'd love for you to join me at. Um, Canva 101, which is $35, but if you use code 10, T-E-N, you can take $10 off and join us for 25. Um, we've got MailChimp, so that's an email marketing webinar. It is free. Um, and we're going to spend about an hour to an hour and a half talking about how you can set up a MailChimp account, what you can do with this email marketing tool. Um, and it's one that we absolutely love. It's, it's what we use at Your Social Status. We also have Google Analytics 101, which is $35. And it is going to be a two-hour webinar because there is so much to cover. Uh, that one is also 35, but you can use the code 10 if you want to take $10 off. Then we've got another free webinar, Instagram 101. It's going to be similar to this format, um, but it'll be mostly you watching me on my um, phone screen. So we'll be able to cast my phone screen through this webinar and you'll be able to see how to set up your um, Instagram account, switch it to a business account, etc. Then April 29th, we have social media ads. We will cover Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, how to set up an ad, the different types of ads, and how ads look on the different platforms because everybody's somewhat the same but a little bit different. Um, and then lastly, we have May 6th, Intro to Search Engine Optimization. That'll be another two-hour webinar because there's just so much to cover. Um, and it is $35, but again, you can use code 10 to take $10 off. Just a small side note, all of our upcoming training is intro level. Um, it's pretty beginner level, especially the search engine optimization of the Google Analytics. So if those words scare you, don't be scared. Um, I think it's something that it's really important that everyone have a basic understanding of when you're a business owner, because 
it is a, you know really important information. All right, so just getting into it, um, a quick overview. My name is Kate Evans. If you don't know me, I'm the owner of Your Social Status. We're a digital marketing boutique located in Centerville, Ohio. I'm from the Dayton area, but have worked in Texas and Florida um, for 3M in Texas and Aveda in Florida for a, a little while. So I got to move there. It was an awesome experience, but I came back to Dayton. I started the social media marketing program for town properties after college. Um, and then I started my own business and I've been doing that since 2011. So um, I've worked with some really awesome brands through partnerships with agencies or just within social media, uh, with, within your social status. And what my goal is, is to take these big budget social media, digital marketing campaigns and ideas and apply them to small business. And so our, our current primary client is small business and that ranges from an entrepreneur or a startup to um, you know a couple hundred employees. So it just depends on, um, we work with everyone in every um, industry. So we're just here to help. That's enough about me and us. And now we'll get into what we'll be covering today. So as I mentioned, this is a how-to video, a one-on-one beginner's video. So we're gonna walk through setting up your Facebook business page. We'll go through all the features and settings, content creation and images, going live and creating stories, um, the messaging features, and then analytics and reporting. And we'll wrap up after that. So one thing to note is that as of November of 2019, there were 80 million bus small businesses that used Facebook business pages. This is the largest representation of small business on social media. Um, and I, I think it's for, you know, it's twofold. One is that small businesses are extremely comfortable with Facebook now. Um, although MySpace you know, has been around longer. Facebook's sort of the original social media platform that I think was most widely accepted worldwide. Um, and it's something that people are very comfortable with. So naturally, they're gonna gravitate towards a social media platform for their business if they're already using it, you know, privately or personally. Um, the other reason is that businesses are seeing some great return on Facebook. Although it's become a pay to play a little bit, as far as reach and, and speaking with your customers, Facebook is giving us some really great tools to be able to interact with our customers and reach people that we normally wouldn't through a traditional marketing method. So Facebook is, is the place to be. Um, and it really works well for a majority of industries. There's some industries where Facebook doesn't make sense, but um, if you're a, a B2C, you should definitely be on Facebook. B2B is a little bit different, but um, you know, like I said, for the most part, you should have a Facebook business page. All right, so we are actually, that's the end of the presentation piece. I know that was quick. We're actually gonna hop right into setting up a Facebook business page. But if you do need to get a hold of me in any way, shape or form, you can always um, email, text, message us, find us on, on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, we're everywhere. So feel free if, uh, to let me know if you've got any questions. And as we move into the next piece, I'll make sure that we don't have anything in the chat here. All right. So I am going to open up. Facebook. All right. So I am actually currently logged out of um, my Facebook account here. And so this is just facebook.com before you log in, before you do anything. Um, so there are a couple different ways that you can create a page. I'll show you both. But um, if you'd like, you could just come to facebook.com 
scroll down to the bottom area and click create a page. Um, you're going to end up having to connect it to one of your accounts anyway. So what I prefer is to just log in um, to your personal account that you're going to be connecting the page to. Now, when I say connecting the page, um, I more mean that a business page needs something to uh, be connected to an admin. That does not mean that if you post on your personal profile that it will show up on your business page. That's a common misconception when I say connect. Um, but when we get started, it, you will need to log into your account to create the page, but, um, and that will just automatically make you the admin of that page. Also, just a little side note, I always, always recommend that you have more than one admin on your Facebook business page. It's very important that there is more than one person that has access because a lot of times what happens is as people come through or your business switches hands or you switch social media managers, whatever it might be, it's always very important to have more than one person that has full access to the business page unless you are a sole proprietor or entrepreneur or something where you know, there's not going to be anybody else that needs access. If it's just you, it's just you. But if you have more people involved, make sure that you've got multiple people who have access. Just so if somebody leaves the company, you're not losing complete control over your Facebook business page. All right, so the other way, so the first way that we covered was you could create a, you know, start creating a page when you um, are signed out. The other easy way to create a page is if you just come right up here to create. And I think a lot of people might not see that. Um, you're used to logging in, getting your notifications here, and that's it. But you actually have this create button. So click create, and then we're gonna create a page. From here, you'll choose if you're a community or public figure or a business or brand, which most of us are gonna be a business or brand and we're gonna put the name of your page. So I am actually going to create a page for a new client. She does eyebrow and facial threading in Austin, Texas. And um, let's see if there's a beauty. We'll put that. So you're gonna fill out all of your information as best as you can here. And you know, I might have to grab her, all of her info quickly here. All right, and let's see. For just the sake of today's training, we'll just do a generic address. And let's see. And phone number. I highly recommend that you put in as much contact information as possible. Um, Facebook's gonna ask for it anyway, but the more completely that your page is filled out, the better for you. Um, you know, your visitors expect to find contact information and so do, um, so does Facebook. All right, so now it's asking for our profile photo and the next thing it'll ask is for our cover photo. So we did, um, we do have a Canva, a free Canva 101 webinar that you can register for and that's where we create all of our social media images. So I am gonna hop in there quickly. I was doing our presentation out of there. Um, and what I'll do is just create a profile photo and a cover photo very quickly here. Now they do have um, templates. So if I wanted to put Facebook cover photo, it already has the correct dimensions laid out for me. So really cool. Um, I am gonna make this pretty basic just because, um, you know, I wanna keep things running today. But for right now, I'll just kind of make something 
um, quick and easy. I'll do this one here. It's a higher quality photo. Okay. So then I'll just download. So there's my cover photo. And I did already create a logo, but you can create a logo in here as well. All right, so I'm gonna hop back to Facebook and say upload a profile picture, which I've saved to my desktop. One thing about profile pictures that I do wanna point out is that um, it is important that you leave a little bit of buffer space around the edge. So you can see here that there's some just solid color around the edge and that way the circular profile picture space won't cut off your text if you've got text on there. All right, and then here's the cover photo. So I've uploaded both, and now it's asking us to um, go through the online booking. We'll actually cover this later, but if you do offer services uh, or even like a consultation or something like that, you can use Facebook's appointment tool. And don't take appointment so literally, you don't have to be service, um, you know, or retail oriented where you're selling something where you'd need to set up an appointment. You can actually use this tool to book phone calls, meetings, free consultations, um, so, you know, anything where you would meet with someone, you could utilize this tool. But like I said, we're gonna skip this for now. And we'll circle back to it in a little bit here. All right, so as you can see, um, I just went through the setup process. It got some basics out of the way. So we do have a profile and a cover photo. One thing that Facebook has become really great with is kind of ushering, through you, um, ushering you through the process of setting everything up. So as you go through and set up your page, it'll give you little tips and pointers in certain spots on your page to let you know, hey, you should probably do this and fill this out so that your page is more complete and um, you know, more people can find you. You can invite your friends, and so depending on how many people um, you have as admins on your page, it'll give them access to their own friends list to invite, so my invites might look different than yours because we have different friends. For now, I'm gonna skip this and we're gonna to go to the basics. So now we'll talk through the settings. So we're gonna leave this homepage area. And we're actually gonna click up here in the settings area. And as I mentioned, Facebook ushers you through um, with these notifications. So we're gonna hop into the settings, which will uh, also cover the page info you'll see right there. So the first settings feature is general. This is gonna be more about the functionality of your page. Is it published? Are you looking to delete it? Uh, do you need to merge pages? So it's, it's a more high level um, of your settings where we can get deeper into more customizations over here. So on this left-hand side is your settings menu, and you can see that it's very, very extensive. Um, we won't go through every single piece of this because some of it you won't need starting out, but we will cover quite a few options just so you see what is available to you. So as I mentioned, we're in the first tab of general settings, and it's gonna be very basic. Is your page published? Or if you click edit, you can unpublish your page. Um, if you are a brand who's taking a break or, or um, want to get your page ready but you don't want it public yet, you can change it to unpublished and it will save everything as is. Then you have control over whether visitors can post to your page or not. Um, I highly recommend that you leave this as default, which is anyone can publish to the page. There are some businesses that need to turn that feature off for certain reasons, but for the most part, you do want to leave this public. Um, newsfeed audience and visibility for posts. You really wouldn't want to limit your visibility of posts, so we're going to leave that as default. The next section is stories and sharing. So um, will you allow people to share your pages, posts, and events? 
Again, I recommend that you leave it as allow because we want as much visibility for your business as possible. So if you shut this off, then people won't be able to share whatever you might be posting and that's going to limit your organic reach. Also, um, the next section is allow people to share your page's story. When we get into posting stories, uh, you'll want that feature turned on as well. Then when we're looking at messages, um, can people contact you privately via your page's messenger? Um, some businesses do get this confused and think that people will be able to message them privately on their personal page. That is not the case. Your, your Facebook business page has its own messenger, which we'll cover um, over here in this advanced and basic and advanced messaging section. Um, so leave that on. You do want people to be able to contact you. The tagging is something where um, you, right, by default it's turned off and I actually recommend um, that you leave it turned off because what this does is it gives people the ability to tag your business page in one of their photos. Um, we've had some instances where it's spam or it's negative that a page is tagged in somebody else's personal picture. If somebody is at your establishment and they want to, uh, you know, tag you in some way, they can still tag you with the at sign and the name of your page, or they can check in to your location. And those are two other ways to tag without them having to tag your photo. So I would leave this as the default turned off. Um, and then we're going to look at, we're going to skip a couple um, sections and go down to because uh, these all the defaults are good. Then we're going to go down to page moderation and profanity filter. Currently there aren't any keywords that are being blocked from the page. So when we look at allowing people to post comments beneath our posts so that if they respond to something that we put up, we could actually upload some phrases and words um, from a CSV or we could just type them in here that might be like trigger words or keywords that are negative as related as it relates to our brand. So if there's something that you want to put in here you can put in here and it will block those words. And then the profanity filter I always turn it on strong um, unless you have a very unique brand where um, profanity is just a part of who you are and 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 who your um, you know who you want to be online which is fine if that's you that's totally cool but um you know for the most part in a business type setting and most most people online i like to turn this off just because most of the time it's it's more of a negative or spammy comment um, similar page suggestions i would leave that turned on um, this is something that comes up when somebody might be looking at another page that's similar to yours. It will suggest that they like your page over on the right hand side. This next section down um, below similar page suggestions, page updates, multiple languages, translate automatically, comment ranking. Um, these are things that we don't necessarily have to go into right now. They're more preferences than settings and typically um, the default setting is more than okay. Um, one thing though I do want to point out, the last two uh, options down here, merge pages and remove page. So if you are like closing down your page, um, you no longer have a Facebook or you're no longer in business, this is where you'll come to close your page. So you'll come um, to your page, go to settings, general, scroll to the bottom, and you can delete your page. Don't do this though unless you're 100% sure because you will lose all followers, all comments, posts, and any organic activity like likes, shares, um, things like that. The other option that I want to show you is merge pages. A lot of times um, people come to us because they started a Facebook page years ago or somebody else started one for them and now they're ready to get back into it and they started up their own page but that old page is still showing up. This is very, very common, especially when a business hires another person or company to do their social media. 
So Facebook has a merge pages option um, where you can find that duplicate page, that old page and merge it into your current page. The only word of caution that I'll give you is when you go into merge pages, make sure you're, you're on the current page that you want to keep when you go into this merge page option. And you'll just click on merge duplicate pages and find the page that you want to merge. Now, if we go up here to page info, this is going to get us through the rest of the way. So this is gonna be just the real basics of your page. You're gonna add a general description, make sure you're right in the right category, which is what you chose at sign up. That phone number is showing, but we will wanna enter a website, email, et cetera. So just for today, um, I will uh, just put some basic info in, but this isn't exactly how I would do it. Um, with the description, make sure that it clearly summarizes exactly what you're about. Um, if you have a product or a service, make sure that it's in here um, because those keywords are going to help your business um, be discovered on Facebook. So you don't want to just kind of be real general. You want to be very specific and short, succinct, to the point, say exactly what you offer. Um, so we could say something like, um, uh, we provide eyebrow threading facial threading and eyebrow tinting services at our salon in the Austin, Texas area. Okay, um, very to the point, I've got my three keywords in there, of eyebrow threading, threading, facial threading, and eyebrow tinting. That's all that they offer. They have a salon in Austin, Texas. So we gave people everything that they need to know about this particular business. Coming down to the contact info, um, we can just put whatever their website is, which they don't currently have a website, so I'll just put um, just a generic one. If you don't have a website, you could just put my page doesn't have a website. So right now, um, this particular client actually functions out of booking through their Instagram and potentially in the future, their Facebook. Um, and then I'll say info at, um, you know, mywebsite.com. I don't want to put her email up on this um, webinar yet because it's a personal email. Um, you can also say my page doesn't have an email if you want to do that. And you would just save your changes. All right. So as I mentioned before, Facebook has come up with a great way to kind of walk you through absolutely every step of information that you need. As I mentioned before, Facebook has done a really great job of walking you through all of the steps to help you fill out and complete your page information. So um, you'll see that these sections that need to be filled out that are a must are still um, highlighted in blue. So I am gonna add Austin, Texas here just because it will help me with my general service area since this particular person is um, bound to a specific service area versus somebody that can offer services nationwide, um, we will want to put a service area for them. And then you can come in and check your the days of the week that you're open. And you can edit your hours here. If you close every day for lunch, you could hit a plus sign so that you could say we're open from 9 to 12 and then again from 1 to 7 or whatever it might be. So it does give you the option on certain days to edit out your hours or add sets of hours in. And then you would hit save changes. If you wanna put your price range in, you can, um, and hit save changes. We're gonna um, skip this impress them part because it's actually going away soon. And then the last section here is your privacy policy. So if you have a website and you do have a privacy policy, um, so this is the link to the Your Social Status one, obviously, we wouldn't put it on this page, but if you do have a privacy policy, you will want to put it in here. This will come into um, use later on if you decide to run ads on your page. So you will need to put a privacy policy in. All right, 
So we've saved all of those changes. And now we're gonna go into the messaging piece. This messaging piece is going to be extensive. Um, it's gonna be the next probably 15, 20 minutes of the presentation, but it is something that I wanna make sure that we step through because it can be a very, very useful tool and something that we've found to be very beneficial for a lot of our um, B2C businesses, whether it's retail or offering like a, a service um, at a brick and mortar location. It's really nice to have these settings. So if you're not familiar with Messenger, Messenger is this little speech bubble with like the lightning inside. Um, so we have personal messages. So up here is my personal message, but then business pages have their own messenger. Okay. And messenger itself is actually its own um, app that you can download uh, for Facebook. So you can message within Facebook and it'll pop up in the app. So they have created a separate app to support this full-blown messaging option. And um, they're doing that because Facebook is really looking to expand this even more to be more of a um, customer management tool, much like a HubSpot or a Salesforce where you've got all of this client information stored. Facebook's giving you a mini version of that for free with your business page. So um, that's why we're gonna spend some time here. So if you scroll down, again, um, really when you go to every page, if you just kind of fill out information as you scroll, they'll step you through it. But um, these are just your basic messenger settings. So the first thing is um, use the return key to send messages. So you can turn that off if, if you don't want to. Um, but when every time you hit enter or return, it will send your message. If you want to start a new line in a message, you just have to do shift and hold down shift and then press enter and it'll start a new line versus sending your message or you can turn it off. All right, so starting a messenger conversation. This is what we call um, a, a lead capture or a funnel or a way to kind of pull people in and, and get them into your um, interacting with your page and get them into your database. So by showing a greeting, if we turn that on, then our page, every time that somebody comes to our page, that little message is going to pop up automatically. And that's going to be hopefully a very inviting message and a way to kind of pull people into your page and get them to speak with you. So we can actually change this and customize it. And I love the little previews here. So there are different things that we can say and different ways that we can personalize our message. So if we hit add personalization, Facebook shows us the different ways that we can personalize our message. So if I pop this out, I can say, hey, or hi, and just do first name. So hi, Kate, thanks for getting in touch with us on Messenger. Please send us any questions you may have. You can keep that or you can backspace and type whatever you want. When you're finished, you hit save. And now your message will show up um, to, when you start a Messenger conversation. This is your direct messenger URL, and you can copy this link. So if you use this for any marketing materials, like on flyers and emails, um, if, if you do like a MailChimp or something like that, uh, constant contact, and you want people to message you directly, you can copy this link and they can get in touch with you. You also can put a messenger widget on your website. So you would just hit get started. So the next section down is the automated responses section. So when I click on this um, button here, it's actually gonna take us to a very extensive area where we'll be able to completely customize every single message interaction with people. But before we hit that, um, I do wanna cover this last button here. Uh, right now you have the option to turn this on. And if you turn it on, what it's gonna do is show the name of the person who's responding. I typically like to keep this turned off because if you have multiple people managing a page or like for myself, since we're an agency managing other people's social media, I don't necessarily want people to see my information um, since I have my own business. We don't wanna create any confusion but for businesses that have their own social media managers, it is kind of nice to put a face to a name. And you can actually customize this section. You could say, show just my first name. 
you could say change the picture so you would put a more professional photo because right now it's just pulling my Facebook photo but if you wanted to change out that image and um, just put initials or something like that it is a really nice feature so um, it's something that you can turn on but like I said for the most part I like to keep it turned off. You'll still be representing and replying as your company, um, but that way people can kind of switch out on Messenger and the customer on the other, other end won't know the difference. So, All right, so now we're gonna look at setting up automated responses. So when I hit set up, it's gonna take us to this other page. And it's gonna step us through all the different options that we have with automated Messenger. So right now, we're looking first at the away message. So this would be outside of your hours of operation. And it's nice to have this turned on because our Facebook pages are graded by our response time to people. So it would be good to know exactly how quickly we're responding to people and what we're doing. So then we'll look at the away message section. And this is where you're able to edit um, the message that people receive if they send you a message outside of your open hours. So we'll be able to set business hours on your Facebook page and then say, have this autoresponder on, you know, outside of those hours. And you can edit this message. Right now, this is off, um, but I do like leaving it on because you are. Um, graded by Facebook on how quickly you respond and it is nice to have um, time set that you are you know offline but still responding to people so what you'll do is you'll come in here and as you see on this grid we can select days of the week that um, you know we might be out during these hours so let's say that Sunday we're completely away and we want to change our time zone to the correct time zone. Um, and then I'm gonna add a time because my Monday through Friday hours might be a little bit different. So I'll select those days. And I'll say that I'm away from, five, uh, let's say 5 p.m. I'm sorry, we're away from, yeah. 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. Okay, so then the red lines go and say, show the away message during the red line times, but we're open the rest of this time. And Sunday, we will want to make sure that it's there, okay? And then we're gonna add um, Saturday, we're away from, let's say, 4 p.m. to, Eight. Okay, so then here's our open hours. And we should probably change this to 8 a.m. as well. All right, so then um, what we do is we'll come down here and we can change our message out. And we can add personalization. So I'll say something like, hello, add personalization. And I'll say first name. And you'll want to do this similar to like a voicemail. Um, so sorry we missed you, but we're currently away from, or we're currently, how about, but. The salon is currently closed. And then we can say something like, if you'd like to book an appointment, please visit. And then we can actually put in um, either a phone number, a page link, or I can just type out whatever the website is where possibly you have booking. And that way, while we're out, we um, you know, at least can hopefully get a sale or a booking or whatever it might be. Um, we will return your message as soon as we can. 
and then we'll say something like take care ATX route queen or if you want to sign it whatever you want to say so now you can actually um, preview what it looks like over here or you can hit preview in messenger here um, to see what it looks like on your own personal Facebook page okay so then I could hit save and now it has um, saved all of my message information but it's still turned off so we're going to actually switch it on and then the other thing that I'd like to um, show over here is questions for potential customers. So when they start a messenger conversation with us, we can actually ask a couple questions to see if we can qualify the lead that we're receiving. Um, this could be, you know, frequently asked questions um, or information that we know we're going to have to get from the person anyway. So this is a really cool um, feature. And so we could say something like, um, hey there, thanks for your interest in ATX Browse. Um, what type of service can we help you with is one of the first questions. So you're going to come down here. So we would say turn the question prompt on. Um, and we'll do that we're going to answer via Messenger directly. So here's the questions. What type of service can we help you with? And then we're gonna give them options based on that. Okay, so there's different things that we can, different types of questions, I should say, that we can um, ask them. We can ask them a direct response question with like a short answer. We can give them options to choose from, um, and then we can ask for more information. So this is almost like they're filling out a form on a website, like a contact form. But what's really cool about this is that um, we're gathering the information and it, and it seems like a real conversation. And we can do it this way because of the way that we set up the questions. It's, it's leading them or guiding them through a discussion that seems real, even though this is all a bot that has been set up. Um, the next section down is reminder. We can actually send an automated message to people um, if they haven't responded to us. So we could say something like, um, hey there, it looks like we never finished our convo about browse. Um, we just need a bit more info from you to get started. Now, this, you know, remember your voice and tone um, for your brand when you're getting into this. So this is something that, you know, you'll have to write in your own voice and tone, but you can come in here and fill out all of these informations, do a reminder prompt, and then a completion message. Um, so it's just a really, really cool tool to kind of guide people through um, getting in touch with you and, and grabbing their information. Okay. Um, so then, the other thing is that we can do a frequently asked questions. So this is something that um, we can, again, another tool to kind of generate that lead and that interest in our page. Um, so we can hit frequently asked questions and turn them on. And then we would come in here and say, um, we would add a question and a response. So similar to the questions for potential customers. Now, here's the kicker. You notice if I click this on, it clicks this one off. So you can only have one at a time. So it really depends on um, do you want the questions to show up on the right hand side of your page or do you want this questions for potential customers? So um, I actually prefer the frequently asked questions because although it's really cool that you can lead somebody through a messenger conversation, I still like putting that personal touch on my messenger and this will be labeled frequently asked questions, so people might expect a more automated answer. Um, so I do like having this feature on versus the questions for potential customers, but still a really cool feature. Um, the next one is responding to feedback. So if we look at, um, if people have the option to review our page and they've changed reviews to recommendations. So Facebook has changed a lot the way um, that people can review your business on the Facebook business page. Um, but one thing is that they can recommend or not recommend it. And as a digital marketing um, 
person, professional, I always, always recommend that you respond to a positive and a negative review because other potential customers do want to see that you care and that you've taken steps to potentially rectify the situation or that you've taken steps to deal with that person. And for the most part, we as as customers ourselves can go to a page and tell when somebody is just being absolutely ridiculous and that business has tried to help and they're still not happy um, or whether a business is just avoiding and you know has no response so we're smart enough to figure it out for ourselves um, so I always recommend that you respond as a business no matter how harsh the review may be because you know we're all human and things happen and I'd rather go with a business that tried to make things right so what's really cool about this respond to feedback is that if somebody recommends your page, you can actually privately send them a message through automation that says, thanks so much for you know, recommending us. So these are really cool features here um, that you can use. So we will want to fill both of these sections out and make sure they're both turned on. And again, it's as easy as clicking edit um, and then this will be sent a couple minutes after they recommend us. We can actually change out the image. So if we wanted to create like a custom thanks image, we could. We can also choose a video, which would be really cool. I've seen a couple brands that actually the owner or a stylist got on or somebody in the store or part of the, you know, someone from the company and they recorded like a thanks so much for recommending us. We're, you know, we can't wait to have you back that type of thing. So we always want to add our personalization. Um, you know, thank you so much for recommending us. We're glad you had a great experience. You can keep it short and sweet. You can create your own image. And then if you want to, what some brands do is they'll actually um, give them a coupon after the fact. Um, here's $10 on us or something like that. And then we would add a link to where they can get it, or we can say, um, you know, here's a gift card or here's a, a link to a discounted service, whatever it might be. And it's okay to offer this because we're not soliciting responses in exchange for this. We're giving this to them after the fact without them knowing. So it, it'd be just a nice little touch and you don't have to give anything away, but just know that you have the option to include a link, a customized image and a customized message. It's a really nice um, offer. On the flip side, if somebody does not recommend us, we can send them a private message trying to rectify the situation. And it'll be the same process where we go through and edit our messages, um, always personalize it and make sure that we maybe add a button where they can contact us directly. Um, you know, um, speak with a manager or contact directly or something like that. And then we can add a link in here to link it to somewhere where they can actually speak with someone from the staff. But it is nice to add that personalization in. Um, we also have, if you want to um, offer, put job postings up on Facebook, you can, and then we can turn on an autoresponder if we've received the application. This section is actually part of the job op application when you post a job in the first place, so we'll skip over that for now. The next part is reminders. So if we use the booking and appointments um, section of Facebook, we can turn on custom reminders, auto reminders for people that have an upcoming appointment. I love this feature and I always, um, I always utilize it. And then follow, follow up messages. So after their appointment, um, we can encourage them to come back or like in my case, um, we do free um, small business consultations. So my follow up message after our meeting has occurred, I might say something like we really look forward to working for you. Um, you know, please feel free to contact us at any time if you have any follow up questions, something like that. So make sure that your follow up message makes sense. Um, and again, you can come in and edit and customize and um, even set the time for, you know, how, how much time do you want to go by? Two days, a couple hours, weeks, months, whatever it might be. And you can customize this return message. 
So this is the custom automated response center. You can see how extensive it is, and that's only a small portion of um, what this what their what this CRM is turning into. So I mentioned earlier, like Salesforce or HubSpot or some type of CRM service where we're retaining all of this customer information. Facebook has enhanced their messenger area to do a lot of that as well and turn this you know, a business Facebook page into a lead capture form um, and a space where we can manage our customers, which is really awesome. So if I, now that I'm in my messages, if I come into Messenger, I'll actually send a message to this page just so you can see what it looks like. Um, so I'm gonna go and just say hi. So I just sent this message through. All right, and you can see all the notifications I got because I am the admin of this page right now. Um, but when this message came through, you saw this whole dashboard pop up over here. So this is very similar to what you're going to see in a CRM where we can add a lot, a lot of information about a potential client or customer. So I can come over here and add um, phone number and email. I can add birthday, which could be useful for marketing purposes address information and save it. I can also come down um, and view their Facebook profile if I wanna get more info about them. And then lastly, I can add labels. So if I think that this person might be um, potential lead or qualified lead, okay, um, I can actually add this label, I can just hit enter and add the label qualified lead. So now when anybody else on my team works with this customer, they'll be able to see my notes. The customer will not. Um, I might want to tag today's date to show the last time that I spoke with this person. I might say that they're a new customer. Um, I might say that I um, booked an appointment with them and I can put in there the date. I can also add notes like Kate wants to work directly with, you know, um, Kate Evans or whatever. So you can put information about um, if somebody wants to work directly with a certain person, if um, they're looking for a certain product or service. I mean, you can put any notes that you want about this person in here. It's really, really cool. So as this message stands now, um, it's a new message. I've put some information in, and now I'm going to come over here and reply as the brand. Um, hello, I am glad we oh, that we were able to help. Okay, so this is the type of message that's like a closing message. So let's pretend that I've resolved whatever situation there is, and this is a closed customer case right now, or a closed customer message. There's going to be no more interaction. I can then move it to done. So now there's nothing new in my inbox. But if I want to, I can change this and hit done and pull up this conversation at any time. And if they become an active customer again where we wanna interact with them, I just hit move to main, switch my option here, and then they're back in the main folder. The other thing that you do is while you're in here, you can um, create a payment request. So you owe us $50 for that service. And if you had products loaded to your page, so if you're a, a retailer of some sort and you've um, connected products to your Facebook page, which could be a whole webinar in itself, you could tag products here if you wanted to. Um, I'm not gonna push this through, but you could say um, this is for, brow threading package or something like that and then hit confirm now i'm not going to put that in there i can send files if i wanted to and it browses to your computer i could put a sticker um, i can insert a saved reply so if we've gone through and we've created auto replies i could actually come in here and do that um, we have one particular client that gets the same types of messages on a daily basis it's people asking for information about having a private party and we have a pretty automated response for them as a business of here's all the information you need to book a private party with us so what i might do as a social media manager is come in here and create a saved reply and i'm going to call it private party info and in this message i'm going to put absolutely everything that they need to know so i could say something like hi 
add my personalization. Okay. Um, thank you so much for your request about more information regarding our private parties. And then I would put all my information in here, okay? Whatever my link is. I could add a photo if I wanted to add a photo in about our private parties, um, which obviously um, I don't have a photo, but we'll just put this photo in for now. Okay, I could put a link in, um, you know, to get started, visit, you know, mywebsite.com slash private parties for more information. Okay, let's just say, so let's say that this was my stand, my standard reply to people when they ask for private party info. So I'll hit save. And then when I come in here, and let's say that um, this person says I want information about a private party, I can actually hit insert save reply, click on that. And it's put, it's going ahead and send that through. So I didn't even have to type any of that out if my reply had already been saved. I just click it, send it through, and it sends this automated response through. It's a really cool feature. And again, it's great for those frequently asked questions. If I wanted to set an appointment with them um, through Messenger, if they said, great, I'd love to you know, come in um, on Saturday at 8.45, and I'll say Kate will be coming Saturday for brows and tinting, let's say. Then I can create the appointment and it's gonna send it through Messenger as well. And then on the other end, the customer will be able to view the details or open it in their own calendar. And then of course I can always just send a thumbs up. So there's a lot of great message features and then, if, and then when I'm finished, I can hit move to done. This is all just within your Facebook Messenger area. Um, of course, you've got your delete option, um, and that's it for the, just the Facebook Messenger. But now if you look over here, we've been taken to our Messenger Center for Facebook business pages, or the inbox. Um, and if you look, it says Instagram Direct, Facebook and Instagram, and then automated responses. So this is a really, uh, what Facebook has done, and, and if you don't know, Facebook does own Instagram. They purchased Instagram a couple years ago. Um, and so now what they're doing is they're trying to make the experiences for businesses much, much easier and, and, and streamlined. So Facebook paid business page inbox gives you direct access to not only your Facebook messages, but your Instagram direct messages. And then Facebook comments, and Instagram comments. So if somebody um, interacts with any of your posts on Facebook or Instagram, you can actually come here, see the comment, and reply to it all in your inbox versus clicking on the notification and then going to that post, etc. cetera. Um, that's another way that you can do it. It's not a bad way of doing it, but it is. Um, it, it can be a little more cumbersome. And it's kind of nice to have this inbox section here where you can come in and, and respond to people, okay? And then this last section is the automated responses, which is what we went through earlier, okay? So now I'm going to hop back out because if you remember, we were actually in the page settings when we got into the messenger area. So I'm going to go back to the settings and we were only on this messaging tab. So now we're going to jump to templates and tabs. We're switching gears here. So business pages on Facebook, as I mentioned before, have come a very long way um, and they now offer templates based on the type of business that you are. So because of this being a service-based business, we're using the service template. However, you don't have to. Um, they have other, they have a general business. They have more of like an event venue, nonprofits, politicians, restaurants and cafes, shopping, video, if you're like a blogger, a video blogger, share videos, and then just the standard layout. Now, technically, you can have any of these templates and move your tabs around, it doesn't matter. So for today's presentation, we're gonna um, keep the page as it currently is as a service-based page, but 
you really can go through any of these and what the templates will do is just put the tabs in an order um, based on you know what type of business you are it doesn't necessarily give you anything extra and when i'm talking about tabs what i'm talking about is um, the way that these look on the left hand side here so these are your tabs over here and based on what you do it'll reorder these tabs but you also have the option to um, come in here and the settings and edit the tabs as well. So you can use the default tabs based on the template, but you can still come in and say, if you really wanted, let's say you're hosting a lot of events, you can just click and drag and move them up below services, move your reviews down, maybe to the bottom, move your posts up a little bit, um, if you don't currently have a shop, you can actually turn off an individual tab and save it so that it doesn't show. So there's all different options that you have with your templates and tabs. Now for going back to our settings menu and we're looking at notifications, this is more just for you, whether you wanna get notifications or not based on certain activity on your page. I typically leave it to the, all the default settings. Advanced messaging um, is, more about different um, third-party features that we might be using. Um, I'm not gonna go through this today, but there are apps that you can um, configure for like chat bots and stuff. But honestly, what Facebook allows you to do is pretty advanced for what most businesses need. The next section is page rules. This is a really important section if you're the admin of your page. A lot of businesses will assign somebody to manage their social media, whether it's within the business or a third party. And I want to make sure that you know what this tab is and how you can, um, you know, edit it and add people. So right now I'm the admin of this page. And if I wanted to add somebody else, I would just start typing their name or email in here. And then I would change the level of um, access that they have to the page. If you're adding someone as an admin, please know that they'll be able to delete the page. Typically, um, a third party service, is somebody like me that would come in, will need full admin access so that we've got access to all of the extended features and we can get your business page in order. But just make sure that you always have um, admin access as well. You don't wanna turn your page over completely to somebody. You can add someone as an editor level. And as I'm changing the access levels, you'll see that this right here, this little description changes. So if you're unsure, you can always click on a level and Facebook will tell you what exactly that level allows a person to do. Editor though is pretty safe. They're able to um, respond as the business post, respond to messages, but they can't really get into much in the admin area or delete your page. So editor is a pretty safe level. And then if you wanted to delete somebody from who's, you know, has a page role already, you would just hit edit and delete them. So this page roles area is important. Um, now we're going to skip down a couple sections to Instagram. If you have a business Instagram, you'll be able to connect that account here. I highly recommend that you connect the two. When you go to run ads, or like I showed you earlier in your inbox, you'll be able to respond to Instagram comments and messages on Facebook. It's just really helpful to connect the two. So you can do that here. Um, if you use WhatsApp, you can do the same thing. Um, WhatsApp is another independent platform that Facebook purchased and you can connect your account here. Now we're gonna go down to um, appointment settings. If you want to utilize the um, appointment booking calendar, this is where you'll come. So you'll just go to settings and then appointment settings at the bottom. Although we won't go through everything, um, Facebook does allow you to come in and customize a lot. You'll be able to sync your messages to your Google Calendar, which I love. There's also, you can change your time zone. Um, you can suggest appointments and the time slots. So if I wanted to change this to 60 minute appointment slots, you can add a services list, which I'll show you. Um, Follow-up messages and reminders, which is what we went through earlier. 
Okay, so all of your appointment settings are in here. Now we're going to wrap up our page setup because just remember we we've only gone through the settings, but we have not completed the full page setup. So a lot of um, folks get a little bit nervous about seeing some of this message over here. Just know that um, these messages over here are um, only for you to see. So you can tell with this little lock. So it says only people who manage this page can see this information. So one thing that I absolutely love to say, if you've ever heard me speak before or attend a webinar is on your website, I say that website real estate is really important. And the same goes for social media. And when I talk about real estate, I'm talking about certain areas on your page. And with Facebook in particular, um, the top area is pretty important because for a lot of people, they don't necessarily go directly to your page. And if they do, um, they don't scroll very far. So this button here, is pretty important and you have the option to change um, what this page button does. So depending on what you want most from people visiting your page, you'll change the button to do that um, function. So if you want somebody to book an appointment with you or get a quote from you using the booking tools, you can do that. If you want them to send you a message, contact, call, sign up, or send an email, you can do that. If you wanna link it to a video or learn more about your business, they can do that. If you have offers or um, products, you can do that. So it really just depends. Um, for contact us, I'll say, you know, um, how about send message? Or if I want them to sign up for my email newsletter, I might say sign up. And then I'm able to send them to the sign up link to sign up for my newsletter. Okay, so depending on what you do, I could say book now. Next, and then they can use the appointments on Facebook. You can connect another tool that you already use, like a third party tool for um, appointment booking, or they can link to the website. So based on what type of button you put here, um, watch what'll happen. So if I hit messenger, I want messages through my messenger, and I hit finish, then it changes the button here to say send message. And you can actually test the button um, here to send a message. And you can edit it at any time. All right, the other feature that I want to show you that's pretty important is, is creating your page's username. So typically, I recommend that if you can, make sure that all social media platforms have the same username. So facebook.com slash, and I would ideally want it to be ATX Brow Queen because that's what our Instagram is. So I would type in here ATX Brow Queen, and then automatically it's going to tell me if it's available if I get this green check mark. All right. So make sure that um, you choose a username that you can use across all social media platforms. And that way, for marketing materials, you could say, and you can find us on social media at ATX Brow Queen. And people now know that the at is a way to not only tag a page, but to find a business page on the various social media platforms. Okay. So you'll want to set that up. And I just, all I did was click over here to choose my at username. So as we go through here, um, that's really it for setting everything up. And as I mentioned before, Facebook will continue to, to suggest things um, as you utilize the page more. I think the only other thing that um, I did wanna cover on today's webinar, and I wanna make sure it's in my slides here. So we've gone over setting up your page, um, features and settings, messaging. So now we're gonna take a quick look over here at just some basics for live and stories, content creation and images, and then the analytics and reporting. This will be a, a, a quicker step through because it's something that, um, you know, we could do a whole content creation webinar. This is just more um, to kind of show you the basics for your Facebook page. So as we look here, um, you can post from your page right here. You can also do it through the Facebook app. And what I'd like to do is actually change my screen sharing quickly and show you the Facebook app that I use for business pages. Um, so I'll change up, 
Let's see, new share. And I'm gonna say iPhone, share, and let's see. Okay, so you should be able to see my iPhone now. Um, so you can see I've got the Facebook app, the Facebook Messenger app, along with some others um, on here. So the one down in the right-hand corner is Facebook page, where it says 86 notifications. So these are um, Facebook pages for the various uh, social media pages that, that we manage. I love having this separate Facebook page app because when I click it, I know that I'm always in the Facebook page um, app as, as myself. So we're gonna switch over to my business page just so you can kind of see what it looks like. So I'll just use my um, business page as an example here. Um, but I really love this app because it is made specifically for business pages. It gives me all of my tools down here so I can see the uh, current analytics on my phone. I can see any inbox messages. I can see um, likes, comments, shares, my schedule of events, um, and then any job postings that I have. Um, along with other settings and information over here. So there's really, um, it has all the tools that you need, but it's just a nice way to, um, you know, utilize posting from your phone and it's ideal for posting stories, which kind of goes into my next um, topic here. So we talked about, you know, publishing, whether you publish from your phone or from the online, you know, desktop version of Facebook. So I can post anything here. I can post photos. I can check in. Um, I can do live video, get bookings, get messages, get phone calls, add directions. So depending on what I put in my post, um, I can do backgrounds. There's so many different things I can do from right from my cell phone for as my business. So what I'm going to show you <clears throat> is how to post a story. So what I'll do is refresh my page here. And if you look at my screen just below my header image, it says your social status and it's got my logo with a plus sign just above the book now button. So if I hit that plus sign, that's gonna add to my story. There's a really big advantage to having stories on Facebook and Instagram and it's because it, they're randomly shown in people's personal stories. So as if I'm using Facebook personally as myself, and I'm watching stories of my friends, I will see a page's story as well pop up in there if, I've, if I'm following that page. So it's a great way and another way to get in front of people, get your business page in front of people. So I'm gonna hit create story, and then I can actually take a picture of this, which is kind of a trippy picture here. <laughs> picture of a picture of a picture. All right, so I just took that photo and now um, I might add a sticker. I love adding um, a location and check in where I am as a business. That's always a great way to advertise your business even more. And I can click and drag. I can tap it to change the style. And then I can write some text like Facebook for business webinar. All right. And I might want to change the style and I can change the color. So I can make it more my color. Okay. Um, there we go. Then I'll hit done and I can click and drag that. Kind of move it if I want to. Okay. I could add another sticker if I wanted to ask a question or say, you know, it's Friday, whatever, have a little bit of fun with it. And then um, once I'm done moving everything around, if I decided that I no longer want um, this Friday, I just click and drag and hold it over the trash can and delete it. And it'll, but you do have to be a little bit careful as you're editing that you don't accidentally delete stuff, especially if you've got it down the bottom here. So all I do is hit next. And then it's gonna go, I can uncheck newsfeed if I don't want it in my newsfeed, but I can share it to my pages story and hit share. And now what it's gonna do is I'll pull down and drag to refresh my page um, feed. And you'll see there's a blue circle around my logo and now my story's published. So that's the um, 
Facebook Pages app, and I'm actually going to switch my sharing back to the um, browser here, just so you can see. So if I go to my page now, no social status, and I hop over there, you'll be able to see that I have, um, I now have a story posted. So there's that blue circle around my logo, which means it's the story that I posted. So the last thing that I want to talk to you about, we, we covered content creation and posting stories. Now I want to quickly just go through um, analytics here. So analytics are very important. They give you a lot of great information about your current customer and when they're online. And those analytics should help you in the future and determine when you should be posting. So there's really invaluable information in here. So as an admin, you're going to come to your business page, hit more, and then insights. And then you can customize it to the last seven days, the last 28 days if you want to. You can look at the last month or whatever it might be. So here's some just your overview of information along with your most recent post. So you can look at what type of reach is it getting? Is it getting organic reach or paid reach? Are you getting post clicks or responses? So this was a particularly good post um, because it got a lot of post clicks and reactions, whether that was a comment, share, or reaction. Um, so it got, as a result, a, a lot of, you know, a lot better organic reach. So then if you come over here, um, we can drill down even more in the insights and we can look at our followers. Um, we can see have we lost or gained followers over the last couple days um, and, and what's happening. So we might be able to see like how many followers are we losing or gaining. We can look at information about total page likes, um, page reach. We can also look at um, page views. So how many people are actually coming to our page, which if you look at this versus the interaction that a post gets, that'll tell you that not a lot of people actually go to your profile page. Page previews. Um, so how many times have people previewed your page? Actions taken on the page or on the page. So if they're clicking on the book now button or something like that, or they're clicking to get a message. The next section then that we're looking at is posts. This is probably the most valuable section because this is where you're going to find out, um, you know, who's on your page and how are they, you know, when are they interacting. So what you can do at any given time is um, kind of just hold your mouse over Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc. And you'll see that the graph is changing. So based on, um, this is just an average of the times that people are online that like your page. So it looks like the best time in general for me to post is um, 5 and 6 p.m. at night. That's when most of my followers are online and most people are going to be likely to interact. Then if I hover over a page, I can see that the peak on Sunday is definitely 6 p.m. The peak on Monday is actually 5 p.m. It looks like is the highest. Tuesday, it would be good to post around noon and then maybe again at 6 and possibly at 7 a.m. So there's a couple peaks on Tuesday. Wednesday is even higher. So Wednesday overall is just a better day to post because that line graph is pretty much over the median curve the whole time. So Wednesdays are a hot day to post. Thursdays are kind of the same with some peaks. Friday, there's a big peak at five o'clock when everyone's off work. And then Saturday, you can see um, that's above the curve as well. So I can come in here and see when my followers are online. And this is a lot different than, um, this is much different than somebody else's business page. So just because Wednesdays are a good day for me, doesn't mean that necessarily they'll be a good day for you. And then of course you've got all the analytics on all of your posts here. So it's really nice to kind of look across a month's worth of posts and say, 
which types of posts are getting the most interaction. And you can see that um, these, these posts here that are video posts are getting a lot more interaction. Okay, so it just depends on what you're sharing, but you can really get a lot of insight. So that wraps it up for our Facebook for Business. Um, I know that there was a lot of, of drilling into the settings and making sure that we, you know, cover absolutely every setting, but I do think it's important that you as a business know exactly what Facebook has to offer you. So we went through setting up your page, going over the features and settings, the messaging, content creation, live um, and stories, and then the analytics and reporting. So I hope you got a little bit something out of this. Um, and as I mentioned before, we have some upcoming trainings that I would love to see you at. Uh, some are free, some are paid, but don't forget that you can use that code 10 T E N to take $10 off any of these trainings. So I hope to see you there and thanks so much for joining me for Facebook for business.